August 30th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Isaiah chapter 6 and 7 from the Old Testament In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the sovereign master seated on a high, elevated throne. The hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs stood over him, each one had six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and they used the remaining two to fly. They called out to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord who commands armies. His majestic splendor fills the entire earth. The sound of their voices shook the door frames and the temple was filled with smoke. I said, Too bad for me I am destroyed, for my lips are contaminated by sin, and I live among people whose lips are contaminated by sin. My eyes have seen the King, the Lord, who commands armies. But then one of the seraphs flew toward me. In his hand was a hot coal he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth with it and said, Look, this coal has touched your lips. Your evil is removed. Your sin is forgiven. I heard the voice of the sovereign master say, Whom will I send? Who will go on our behalf? I answered, Here I am. Send me. He said, Go and tell these people, Listen continually, but don't understand. Look continually, but don't perceive. Make the hearts of these people callous, make their ears deaf and their eyes blind. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Their hearts might understand and they might repent and be healed. I replied, How long, Sovereign Master? He said, Until cities are in ruins and unpopulated, and houses are uninhabited and the land is ruined and devastated. And the Lord has sent the people off to a distant place, and the very heart of the land is completely abandoned. Even if only a tenth of the people remain in the land, it will again be destroyed, like one of the large sacred trees or in a shira pole, when a sacred pillar on a high place is thrown down. That sacred pillar symbolizes the special chosen family. During the reign of Ahaz, son of Jotham, son of Uzziah, king of Judah, king Rezan of Syria, and king Pekah, son of Remaliah of Israel, marched up to Jerusalem to do battle, but they were unable to prevail against it. It was reported to the family of David, Syria has allied with Ephraim. They and their people were emotionally shaken just as the trees of the forest shake before the wind. So the Lord told Isaiah, Go out with your son, Shir Jashub, and meet Ahaz at the end of the conduit of the upper pool, which is located on the road to the field where they wash and dry cloth. Tell him, make sure you stay calm, don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated by these two stubs of smoking logs or by the raging anger of reason, Syria, and the son of Remaliah. Syria has plotted with Ephraim and the son of Remaliah to bring about your demise. They say, let's attack Judah, terrorize it, and conquer it. Then we'll set up the son of Tabeel as its king. For this reason, the sovereign master, the Lord, says, It will not take place, it will not happen. For Syria's leader is Damascus, and the leader of Damascus is reason. Within 65 years, Ephraim will no longer exist as a nation. Ephraim's leader is Samaria, and Samaria's leader is the son of Remaliah. If your faith does not remain firm, then you will not remain secure. The Lord again spoke to Ahaz. Ask for a confirming sign from the Lord your God. You can even ask for something miraculous. But Ahaz responded, I don't want to ask. I don't want to put the Lord to a test. So Isaiah replied, Pay attention, family of David. Do you consider it too insignificant to try the patience of men? Is that why you are also trying the patience of my God? For this reason, the sovereign master himself will give you a confirming sign. Look, this young woman is about to conceive and will give birth to a son. You, young woman, will name him Emmanuel. He will eat sour milk and honey, which will help him know how to reject evil and choose what is right. Here is why this will be so. Before the child knows how to reject evil and choose what is right, The land whose two kings you fear will be desolate. The Lord will bring on you, your people, and your father's family a time unlike any since Ephraim departed from Judah, the king of Syria. 
At that time the Lord will whistle for flies from the distant streams of Egypt and for bees from the land of Assyria. All of them will come and make their home in the ravines between the cliffs and in the crevices of the cliffs, in all the thorn bushes and in all the watering holes. At that time the sovereign master will use a razor hired from the banks of the Euphrates River, the king of Assyria, to shave the head and the pubic hair. It will also shave off the beard. At that time a man will keep alive a young cow from the herd and a couple of goats. From the abundance of milk they produce, he will have sour milk for his meals. Indeed, everyone left in the heart of the land will eat sour milk and honey. At that time, every place where there had been a thousand vines worth a thousand shekels will be overrun with thorns and briars. With bow and arrow, men will hunt there, for the whole land will be covered with thorns and briars. They will stay away from all the hills that were cultivated for fear of the thorns and briars. Cattle will graze there and sheep will trample on them. God chapter 6 in Isaiah is one of my favorite chapters in all of the Bible. Just this huge amazing picture of you in the temple and these perfect superhuman creatures are humbled before you and singing your praises. And I just love reading that chapter. I don't even know how many times I've read it at this point, but it's just incredible. And I love the story that, that takes Isaiah from the woe is me, um, I, I am nothing, I am sinful, all the way to here I am, send me. And the only difference of that change is you. Uh, that you provided the forgiveness and the strength for him to uh, become a person that can be used in your kingdom as one of the head honchos in your armies. Chapter 6 is so powerful. And, I, and like I said, I just love reading about your character and your sovereignty. And tr you know me, I'm always trying to get a grasp on how big you are. I know that will never happen. Sort of like understanding how big your love is. But wow. Chapter 6 is just super powerful, and um, it's just amazing to me that a God that big cares about me who's this tiny. Um, and so, God, I do pray that you just fill me up with strength and your power and your forgiveness so that I can go out and do powerful things for you like Isaiah did. But Chapter 7 is the one that probably tugs at our heart more uh, because we're very much like King Ahaz. We live in fear a lot because we don't put 100% of our faith and trust in you. We say, here are the things that I'm willing to give up control for to you, God. You handle those, but these things I'm still going to own because I fear that you don't quite understand my situation. I fear that you're not going to handle it the way I want you to. I fear the outcome. If you take care of it, I'll just take care of it myself. <laughs> And we know that that never works out and obviously didn't work out for King Ahaz where he trusted in a, a human king rather than the king, um, the Lord of all. And there's so many things in this world that we put our trust in. I think about, because I, I fly a lot, I think about the fact that we put our trust in airplanes. Most of us, unless we have a fear of flying, most of us just get on a plane and we don't even give it a second thought that we're about to go thousands and thousands of feet up in the air <laughs> in a piece of in a piece of metal, and then we expect to to end at our destination and and be alive. That's our expectation, uh, and we have faith in that. Um, here's you who has never once been inconsistent in his character, and yet we have this fear that you're even though you've made. Uh, worlds upon worlds and you created the bumblebee that technically shouldn't fly be able to fly and and you've solved all these amazing things in my life and blessed me with so much that the Lord who does all of those things and makes the scar the stars come out at night and the sun rise apparently can't handle my worldly problems I, and God I just I just apologize you know that I ask forgiveness for this one a lot because it simply comes out of fear that fear that my wants and desires don't match up for, to your wants and desires for me. And that fear is factual in the sense that rarely 
What you want and desire for me rarely doesn't match up with what I want and desire. Because what I want and desire is worldly. What you want and desire for my life is eternal. It has to do with your glorification, your kingdom. And I struggle with the distance between the two of those. You know, you see that sign all over that says uh, from Romans, if God is for us, who can be against us? Well, amazingly, we're against ourselves. We fight you all the time. And King Ahaz even was told, I will show you that I am your God. Now, how crazy awesome was that of you to offer that? You didn't have to do that. You expect us on faith to follow your will for our lives. But you said, ask me anything. And King Ahaz his fear was so big and I know his fear was so big because mine gets that big his fear was so big that he's like no 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 I don't want you to do anything because if you did it would prove that he was wrong and and then we have to amazingly deal with our fear and why do we have that fear and why do we think we deserve less than what you what you want to offer us I get that you're for us I get that you're for us against evil but I really struggle with the fact that you have to fight against us a lot of times for our own well-being. <laughs> but God, I do know that my fear doesn't get me anywhere. In fact, it tends to lead me into a lot of evil places. My faith will activate you. My fear will activate the enemy. And that's not what I want. Not only because I don't want the enemy using my life, <laughs> For any reason but because I believe in the eternalness of your kingdom I believe in your big plan even though I have no clue what it is I have faith in you God and I do know that you want what is better for me than what I want I just struggle with my two-year-old tantrums God I ask that I don't end up like the stories of Isaiah, where there's only a remnant of me that you were able to use. Such a tiny remnant we see at the end of this chapter that just a tiny amount of food fed all of the remnant. I don't want that. I want you to be able to use all of me. Here I am, all of me, God. Send all of me to wherever you need me to go. If it's my backyard, if it's the internet, if it's Africa, send me. But help me learn that it needs to be all of me for your purpose and for your glory. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>